More titles have made their way to T-Town, and we have the newest national champs on the show tonight. Plus, baseball and softball updates, and what's Nick Saban saying down in Destin at the SEC meetings? It's all right now, and it's only on Tider Insider TV. Go inside the Crimson Tide. Tider Insider TV with Rodney Orr and Kerry Harris. Well, it's inevitable when you have the numbers of quarterback that Alabama does, you're going to have some attrition. Today, Nick Saban telling reporters in Destin that Parker McLeod will transfer the redshirt freshman from Walton High School in Marietta, Georgia, becomes the fifth quarterback to transfer under Saban. Five is also the number of scholarship quarterbacks still on Alabama's roster. And good evening, everybody, and welcome into Tider Insider TV, presented each and every week by Buffalo Rock, alongside Rodney Orr from TiderInsider.com. I'm Gary Harris, ice cold Pepsi Cola again tonight. At least I think it's ice cold. I had it in the refrigerator all day. You tell me. It's cold. Just the way I like it. I need a little refreshment Tuesday nights at 630. It's already been a long day, but we are just getting started. Rodney, we have a lot of football to talk about as usual, but we're going around the horn for several different sports tonight. And let's begin with our Tuscaloosa Tractor Top Story. The best always rise to the top. It's time for the TITV Top Story, presented by Tuscaloosa Tractor. Well, Alabama's SEC softball championship squad boarded the plane in Tuscaloosa today via charter, actually, to head to Oklahoma City. That's where the Tide will compete in their ninth Women's College World Series in program history. Pat Murphy and the Alabama softball team are obviously excited to get back to OKC, but they know big challenges lie ahead. It never gets old. I mean, it's, this is like Christmas morning. Seriously, the best time of the year is right now. Can all seven teams beat us? The answer is yes. I think this is probably the most wide open field we've ever had. You know, the good thing about Alabama, or the most dangerous thing, is there's a hero every game, a different hero. And here's a look at who's up first for the Tide as play gets going on Thursday at ASA Hall of Fame Stadium in Oklahoma City. It's a rematch from the championship series two years ago, Alabama will face Oklahoma, the number seven seed, Alabama the two seed. The winner will be paired with the Louisiana Lafayette Kentucky winner. Strong SEC flavor, three SEC teams making it to OKC. Of course, Alabama hopes to not only be the final SEC team standing, but the final team standing, period. It should be a good tournament. Well, softball isn't alone in the postseason, Rod. The Alabama baseball team heard its name called on selection Monday for the NCAA tournament, and it's a very familiar spot for the Crimson Tide. They'll be part of the Tallahassee, Tallahassee Regional as the number two seed. Alabama has been in Tallahassee three times in the past four years, so they know it well. Mitch Gaspard hopes his team can use the familiar surroundings to its advantage. I think on our side, uh, you know, a lot of familiarity with, with Florida State. Obviously, we've been there a couple times now. I think with our guys, really, after a poor showing last year, I think it's a great opportunity for us to go back and re redeem some of the things we, we had last year. I think it's going to be good for us to get back over there. And uh, we, we're, we know the ballpark and we know the area and stuff and how it's going to be down there. So I think that this regional works out for us. Here's a look at Bama's draw. Kennesaw State is up first on Friday morning. Alabama, if it wins, we will then face the Florida State Georgia Southern winner. Of course, you want to stay out of that loser bracket, so a big game Friday. Spencer Turnbull will be on the bump. Alabama's number one starter, fresh and ready to go after a long layoff, so he should be at his best. Well, we promised you some football news, and we have it. A big commitment riding this week for the Crimson Tide in the 2015 class. It comes from Hell Hinches, a tight end out of Missouri. And this is a gifted pass receiver. Probably a little work to do in his blocking. Might remind some people of a little more athletic, faster Colin Peake, but he can really go get the football ride. Yeah, he's a really good player. Gary had offers from most of the top schools in the country. Again, a lot of people thought he was going to go to Ohio State. He announced his decision, what, on Monday. And, you know, I think it's a huge pickup. Gary's 6'4 and a half, 225 pounds, a guy that can get bigger. And we, we talk about his ability to jump. He's an outstanding basketball player. He understands how to position his body, shield the defenders away from the ball. And, you know, he's just, he's a, He's a talented young guy. He's very intelligent, so he's a leader, leader type guy. Brings that personality to the team, and I think it's a huge pickup for Alabama that really wants to get two tight ends. Now, 
Not that the tight end hasn't been big in the offense in the past, but with Lane Kiffin here, it figures that this position is going to serve an even bigger role. And as you mentioned, that's why they feel the need to have really two pass-catching tight ends on the roster at all times. Yeah, again, and not only in the in the receiving uh, area, Gary, but certainly in blocking, you know, in terms of lining up in that I formation, having guys that can block with power on the edge. You know, you've had Travis McCall in the past, guys like that. Michael Williams certainly was very valuable. So having guys like that is certainly something, you know, they want to have in this offense. Now, Hinches is a guy that really has to get a little bit bigger, as you mentioned, but he's got time to do that. And I think, again, they're continuing to look for other tight ends. They have several others, you know, on the board that they're in, they're in the running for. So I, will, I think Alabama will probably sign at least one more tight end. 16 commitments already for the class of 2015. No surprise today that Nick Saban was pushing for a December 1 early signing date. It's a long time to, try to have to try to hold on to these guys until next February. Well, speaking of the spring meetings, they are going on in Destin, Florida this week. A lot of news usually comes out of Destin. It's been fairly quiet so far today, but uh, there are some stories worth mentioning. CBS released a partial schedule for SEC football games. That includes two doubleheader weekends, one of which would be that Alabama-LSU matchup in Death Valley on November 8th. Florida also made some noise with Jeremy Foley and uh, the athletic director and the head football coach, Will Muschamp, announcing they will no longer play FCS schools. Of course, losing to Georgia Southern might have something to do with that. And finally, Nick Saban says that the series with Michigan State for Alabama was canceled because the Spartans did not want to play a neutral site game. Another note, the athletic department announced this afternoon a date for homecoming. It will be November 22nd against Western Carolina. More TITV is coming up next. When we return, it's time to welcome home the national champions. Maya Jansen and Aaron Routliff join the program next to discuss their doubles domination of Georgia. I mean, this one was really never competitive. And they are the latest to bring home trophies to title town. We'll have them on next. And also, coming up a little bit later on the phone, we'll be welcoming your phone calls, emails, and tweets. You see the information on the screen on how you can get in touch with us. The number is always 205-348-WVUA. That's 348-9882. Email us, TITV at uh, WVUATV.com, or you can Twitter us at Tider Insider, hashtag Tider Insider TV. We want to hear from you, but next up, we'll be talking championships. We'll be back with the only show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide. Tider Insider TV, presented by Buffalo Rock, continues right after this. Well, it's like the Bryant Museum commercial says, so many trophies, so little space. We'll add two more to the trophy case at UA. This weekend, Maya Jansen and Aaron Ratliff brought home a women's tennis doubles championship by defeating Georgia in straight sets. They just didn't win. How about 6-1, 6 love? I mean, I think, what did they have, 13 points the whole the whole match? And now they join Roddy and I here on Tider Insider TV. We've got some special stuff. First of all, we've got the hardware, straight just back from Athens, right, yesterday? Yeah. Trophies and... We've got a cake to celebrate the championship, and the last thing I want to do is turn this thing over. So I don't know if you can see the big A on top, but, but you all see it. And it's a celebration cake. Congratulations. And, Rodney, let's start with, with Maya, since you're the, I guess you're the elder statesman. You're a sophomore. Yeah. Aaron's just a freshman. You did not play during the fall uh, rehabbing an injury. You come out in February. Talk about how the two of you got paired together, and it, did you know pretty quickly that it was had a chance to be magical? Uh, yeah, we got paired together, I think, just in one practice, and we played really well together, and uh, then we kind of switched up doubles partners again, but those didn't, didn't seem to work as well, so then uh, we played together again, and we played really well, and I think that's when we knew we were going to play together. Well, I, I know at one point, I think you were like 12 and 4, and then all of a sudden, you just kind of took off. You won 10 in a row. You you won your last 10. You're on a streak. I mean, kind of what kind of precipitated that, that role you got on? Good. Um, I'm not really sure. I mean, we just kind of learned how to work together. A lot of the biggest thing about doubles is that you need to learn to, about your partner and where they are on the court and what they like to hear during, like, tense matches. So I would just say that we got to know each other really well. And we're really good friends, so that helps a lot. I really want to know, you know, when, when Alabama wins a national championship in sport, be it football, softball, whatever, you know, there's a lot of hurrah and, and so forth. I want to know what, what kind of banner have you gotten from Twitter and various places? <laughs> I mean, it was kind of crazy. After we got done with our match, I mean, I think I had like 98 text messages and like my Twitter was just going and going. So, I mean, all our fans here are so supportive of us and my friends follow us a lot. So, I mean... I mean, it felt really great to have people know our accomplishments and 
you know, be there for us. You know, I've, I've been here in Tuscaloosa for a number of years now, and I remember this program when it wasn't national championship caliber. I mean, it just wasn't very good. And I know the time and energy and effort that Coach Mines has put into it. Aaron, I'll start with you on this. Uh, when you were recruited by Alabama, you were also recruited by other top tennis schools around the country for both of you. Aaron, you first, you know, why Alabama? What did you see about this program? Obviously, it, it's lived up to your expectations, mm -hmm. and you've helped, helped it live up to expectations. But what was it that drew you to Tuscaloosa? Um, I'd say honestly I wanted to come to a school that had the ability to win a national championship but just hadn't done it yet. So um, I came here and I loved the coaches. Um, I loved the girls on the team. I loved the town, like how it was a college town and how everyone was like roll tight all the yeah. time. But um, yeah, I would just say I wanted to come somewhere where we could win a national championship. And uh, the team is the first goal, but we're happy to do it as a double team. Uh, but yeah, now we're just working towards the team one. What about you, Maya? I would say the same. Uh, I mean, the people and the coaches were such a big deal to me. Coach Mines and our new coach, Ricky Doverspike, the, the coach ability that they have, and I think the positivity and the attitude that they have towards us makes it a winning environment, and so it makes us want to win more. Well, you know, Coach Saban gives his, he has a 24-hour rule. You know, you win or lose, you have 24 hours to celebrate or whatever. And what's Coach Mines told you? How long do you have? She hasn't told us an exact date. Well, they don't date. have any more matches. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I mean, she told us to enjoy it. Um, I mean, it's a big deal. And just to really, really take time and enjoy the moment because it doesn't happen often. Yeah. You know, you're both young. I mean, you're sophomore to freshman. And... I know you would want to defend this title, but this year you were so close to winning a team championship as well. And I know that's the ultimate goal for everybody. Can that be something that you accomplish in the next couple of years? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's what we've been working towards all season. All the teams um, previously at Alabama, everyone puts exactly what we're working towards. So I think that this year we came really close and we played well and it just came up a little short, but that's eventually what we're trying to work towards. And I'm Definitely possible. It's definitely possible. Yeah, and, and what I meant, obviously, my question is, you start looking forward to the future. When when do you really start honing in and start, you know, thinking about, hey, there's always next year. You're a freshman. You're a sophomore. Yeah. You know, you still you, you're you're thinking about the future. When oh. do you start honing in on that? I think it's always in the back of my mind. Obviously, I think we enjoyed the win coming back from Athens, and then, I mean, this morning, even today, we're I mean, we're thinking about next year. We're thinking about what we can accomplish especially as a doubles team and as a team, especially. Well, thank you, ladies, so much. Congratulations, and uh, great to have you. And, and I, I got a feeling there may be more championship hardware in the future. <laughs> Let's hope so. All thank right. You so much. Thank you. Much more TITV comes your way next. We'll check in on Alabama's men's golf team. Could another yet uh, trophy be making its way home this week? There's a very good possibility. And next, we're welcoming your phone calls, emails, and tweets. There's the information on your screen on how you can get in touch with us. We'd also like to thank Alabama Tennis Sports Information Director Jessica Paré for bringing these ladies in to visit with us. And uh, we want to make sure there are no violations, so they are not going to eat any cake. They're going to get to look at it, but y'all probably don't need it anyway. But uh, it's a beautiful cake from Edgar's Bakery, so we want to thank for them for sending it over, but the girls will not be partaking. We'll be right back with the only show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide, Tider Insider TV, right after this. It was a beautiful day finally in Hutchinson, Kansas for the NCAA Men's Golf Championships and Alabama came from behind in the first match of the day in match play against SMU to uh, win and advance to the semifinals and there they took care of business against SEC rival LSU winning 4-1 to one. so the Tide advances to the championship match and here's how it looked for Alabama. Wyatt, Shelton, Mullinax and Lovelady all won their matches against LSU and so they win it 4-1. to one. Now the Tide will await the winner between Stanford and Oklahoma State. That match is going down to the wire, but the Tide trying to win back-to-back -back NCAA championships, and this is the third straight year they made it to the championship match. All right, time to take some phone calls, emails, and tweets. First, uh, tonight, Rodney, we have a question from Twitter, and it's about men's golf. And the question is, in regards to match play strategy, does Coach Sewell alternate matching lineups for match play? What's the strategy? And that's from Joel Coppage. Well, Joel, it does depend a lot on who you're playing and how the matchups look to the coaches. It not, is not necessarily one versus one. Your top player against their top player. You're looking for matchups that you think you have an advantage in. Sometimes it may be a lower-seeded player on your squad that you think matches up well with the number one on the other squad. 
and that would give you a chance to knock out a number one and save your number one to play a lower seeded member from the other team. So yes, it's very much about matchups. Uh, it varies from match to match, and it's not always one versus one, two versus two, three versus three, so forth and so on. It uh, depends on how the coaches see the matchups. Obviously, these coaches know what they're doing because they have uh, matched it up so you know well so far, right? As we said, a win tomorrow away from back-to-back -back national titles. Man, yeah, that's unbelievable. He's done an outstanding job, no question about it. I know if you watch on TitanSider.com, Gary, there's a lot of excitement right now with Alabama. The, what they've done thus far. It really is. All right, let's take a phone call. Let's go to Cordova and talk with uh, John Mack. John Mack, welcome into the program. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing good. My question tonight is, is who's going to replace our kicking team and how good do they look this year? Well, John Mack, I tell you, that's a good question. I mean, when you look at it with uh, Cody Mandel gone, certainly Alabama has a, uh, a big shoes to fill there. And, you know, when you look at it, J.K. Scott was a guy who was signed, a, you know, outstanding high school player in Denver, Colorado at Mullen High School. He's a superb punter, but he's also an excellent field goal kicker, place kicker, so he's going to get an opportunity to try both of those. Tuck Borey is a guy from Hoover who is a Class 6A All-State punter who's coming in. He's, he's already here on campus right now as well as, J.K. Scott and you know those guys will compete and the Gunner Rayburn I think is a guy that's going to walk on from the state of Louisiana as a place kicker so you know Gary a lot of times you have place kickers that come in and you know they end up winning the job you remember Cody Mandel won the job when Jay Williams was signed in that recruiting class and Jay Williams never punted so again you know you look at a guy like Tuck Borey maybe Gunner Rayburn certainly they will compete but J.K. Scott is a guy who is really highly recruited. Yeah Ronnie quickly before we take another call it really is different than any other position on yeah. Football team. Most of the time, walk ons are just struggling to find a spot, but in place kicking and punting, often they wind up being your best guys. They are. And, and you know, again, we talked about Jay Williams. How many times through the years have you seen a walk on win that? win a role there as a kicker. So again, I think that when you look at those guys coming in to compete with J.K. Scott, they'll certainly compete. But don't forget about Adam Griffith. Certainly, I think when you look at him, I know he, he had you know, some ups and downs in the spring, but he's a very talented kid with a great leg. All right, let's uh, travel down to Malville and talk with Dale. Dale, welcome in the program. How are you? Hey, I'm good. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Uh, yes, sir. I was uh, kind of got a, a basketball question and sure. a football question. I wonder if you uh, could give me uh, your opinion on the player the shooting guard from uh, Gulf Coast, Florida, mm -hmm. coming in as Coach Grant, and then Ronnie Clark. I wonder if you could tell me what position do you guys believe that he would play? All right, we'll start with Verdell, the transfer, actually transferring in from Hawaii, previously at Florida Gulf Coast. Uh, he can shoot it. I mean, I, I've watched some tape on him. You know, he, he – has got a little bit of that Marshall Henderson. I'm not talking about personality-wise. I'm just talking about an ability to shoot the basketball from anywhere on the floor. I mean, there's not a shot that's too deep for this guy. Now, they're certainly wanting him to take shots within the offense, but he can fill it up. And when you've got a shooter, it opens up a lot of different things for you offensively. So I really like this addition. He's eligible immediately, and I think he'll help Alabama. As far as uh, uh, Ronnie Clark, the uh, safety-slash-quarterback wide receiver from Calera High School, uh, you know, where do you see him factoring that, Roddy? Well, again, you look at him, Gary, and I, he was signed to play safety. That's certainly where he'll get his first shot, and he's got really good size. You know, he's 6'2 plus, you know, he's 210 plus, so he's a big kid. He's got size. He's got speed. He's a great athlete. You know, he could play safety, could eventually become a linebacker, but, you know, right now I would think his first look's going to be safety, and Alabama, you know, certainly needs safeties when you start looking towards the future, so he could be one of those, but, you know, his versatility, again, we talk about Alabama's recruiting and how Nick Saban recruits guys who are versatile, whether they're offensive linemen who can play several spots or, or linebackers who can play all four of the linebacker spots and DBs that can move around, so, again, I think Ronnie Clark kind of, kind of figures in that same role type or that mold, Gary, where he can play various positions. All right, we're back after this. Stay with us. Let's go right back to the Med Center hotline and talk to Charles in Silicaga. Charles, welcome in. Hey, what's going on? All right, go ahead, Charles. Um, besides uh, McLeod, what other quarterback you think will be tra transferring out of Alabama? Hey, Charles, I'm telling you, that's really a difficult thing to predict. I mean, when you look at it, most schools like to have five quarterbacks on scholarship. When you look at Alabama, as Gary said, you know, they've got five still here. So, you know, I, I really would hate to project someone possibly leaving. It would certainly do nothing but be speculation or be nothing more than speculation and wouldn't want to do that. But, you know, when you look at it, Gary, I mean, you know, still, 
you have Jacob Coker obviously coming in and Blake Sims certainly competing, but when you start looking for the future, there's still some young guys. Uh, Cooper Bateman's only a redshirt freshman. We know, as you mentioned, Parker McLeod's leaving. Uh, Alec Morris, only a uh, redshirt sophomore. David, David Cornwell, Cornwell, true, true freshman. freshman. So, you know, a lot of those guys are young. We'll just kind of have to see how it all pans out. All right, real quickly, let's get to uh, Jerry and Gardendale. Go ahead, Jerry. Jerry, you with us? Yeah. Go ahead, Hi, real quickly. Yeah, go ahead, Jerry. Yeah, I was just uh, going to talk about the uh, uh, girls' softball. Uh -huh. I think that uh, Alabama's got a real good chance of uh, winning another title this year, and I, I think that Haley McClinney might be the best center fielder in the country. Jerry, good good thoughts. I do, too. I think they've got a team that's capable of winning it. Got to get a little luck. You know, it's, it's going to be a tough tournament. Haley McClinney is a player of the year candidate. If she doesn't win it this year, she's only a sophomore. I think she'll definitely get one before she is out of here. Thanks for the phone calls on the Med Center Hotline. We're back to wrap up this week, week's edition of TITV right after this. We'll check in on C.J. Mosley, and while he'll probably be picking up the tab at dinner tonight in Baltimore, stay with us. As we near the close of the spring sports season, the calendar is getting thin. The baseball and softball teams hope to still be alive this time next week when we come to you on TITV. Plus, men's golf team hopes to wrap up a national championship tomorrow. Well, it's good to be C.J. Mosley. The former Crimson Tide linebacker signed his rookie contract today with the Ravens. He's slated to make $8.7 million over the life of the contract, including a $4.7 million signing bonus. 17th overall pick signed that four-year deal with an option for a fifth in Baltimore. Well, don't forget, if you missed any of tonight's show, you can catch the replay tonight at 1035. Plus, it'll be available on our website, WVUATV.com. If you notice, as always, riding our outfitted in original elephant wear, from the home of Original Elephant Wear, the locker room located on the University Strip, a Tuscaloosa tradition for 50 years, or shop online. Once again, special thanks for our big Alabama cake to Edgar's Bakery. I um, see it sitting over there waiting on me. I bet it's going to be delicious. And also tonight, before we go, a long overdue admission to the College Football Hall of Fame was righted last week. The late Derek Thomas will finally be inducted into the class of 2014. He'll be remembered as an all-time great in college football and the NFL. He still owns several records at the University of Alabama. That sack record may not ever be broken. For Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. Thanks for watching. Good night, everyone.